Can you guess what is the thing? Before empires and royals Before poetry and writings Before metal tools and weapons The answer is cheese Yes, cheese But have you ever wondering how cheese is made and what impacts can be resulted from the process? Well, you're about to find out in Life Circle Assessment on Cheese. Cheese making and eating believed to date back to 8000 before centuries. The main ingredient for cheese making is milk, which obtained from cow, sheep, goat, or buffalo. Cheese offer health benefits as it is high in protein, calcium, phosphorus, and minerals. Common coagulants used in cheese making are acetic acid, gluconodata lactone, and calcium chloride. There are many types of cheese, for example, fresh or no rinse cheese, edge fresh, soft white rings, semi soft, hard, and blue cheese. Now, we are into life cycle of cheese. The first stage is raw material acquisition, which mostly occur in dairy farm. During feed production, dairy cow's diets must allow to fulfill the functions of lactation and of reproducing annually. The diet must include sufficient water, energy, protein, fiber, vitamins, and minerals. Maintaining rumen health, optimize cow comfort, successful dry periods, position feed additive to increase pig milk yields. During the raw milk production, milk will be obtained either by hand milking or vacuum system, which draws the milk from the receiving can through large diameter pet stainless steel piping. Once the milk has been collected, the milk truck arrives and pumps the milk from the tank for transport to a dairy factory. The second stage of the life cycle is manufacturing. The milk will received from the dairy farm and stored in the dairy factory. Milk filtration and standardization before cheese making is needed to optimize the protein to fat ratio to make a good quality cheese with a high yield. Next is the pasteurization process. It is important to reduce the number of spoilage organisms and improve the environment for the starter cultures to grow. During curdling and curd ripening, enzyme that acts on the milk proteins will be added to form the curd. The curd then will be not disturbed for almost 30 minutes until a firm coagulum forms. The cut is stretched and kneaded in hot water, developing stringy and fibrous body. The curd then cut and rapidly pile up to push the moisture away. Cut firming is where the curd are placed in cheese hoops and pressed into blocks to form cheese. The cheese may be cut and packaged into blocks, bags, or any suitable packaging. The cheese will left in shelf for ripening, where it remains until distributed. The third stage is distribution. There are few elements that need to be considered at this stage. Proper shipping and care of cheese and dairy products must occur as the items move through the supply chain. The process associated with distribution are packaging, refrigeration, and transportation. Good knowledge of distribution protocol can help ensure quality products. Transportation concerns commonly involve keeping cheese at consistent cold temperatures to prevent spoilage. This can be achieved by shipping products with gel packs and specialized protective packaging. Quality control oversight can be handled by computer applications, for example, Formulas, recipes, shelf life, expiration dates, and batch lots can be tracked by the system. 
Warehouse Oversight can track the cheese via computer solutions. These applications are designed to monitor orders, inventory, manufacturing, financial data, and manage warehousing. Next is use of products. Cheese commonly used in cooking and delicacies all over the world. It contributes to economic growth in producer countries. The last stage of the cycle is product and off-life stage. Most of the final products are derived from food packaging, wastewater, and food leftover. According to many sources of studies, cheese manufacturing and consumption cause significant environmental impacts. Life cycle assessment is conducted to evaluate the environmental impact associated with product, process, and activity during its life cycle. The environmental impacts resulted from cheese manufacturing and consumption are eutrophication, global warming, large energy consumption, ozone depletion, acidification, and photochemical ozone creation potentials. So, what can be done in order to overcome the environmental impacts resulted from cheese manufacturing and consumption? The environmental impacts can be reduced by using water cooling tower in pasteurization process in order to reduce water consumption. This equipment also contributes to efficiency and pasteurization process resulting better product safety. The acquisition cost is relatively low along with easy setup and maintenance. Other than that, using liquid fare for dairy beverage production as we have excellent nutritional source of protein and lactose. Improved cheese shelf life by addition of preservative using modified atmosphere packaging, applying high pressure processing and active coatings. This way, packaging waste and food loss can be reduced. Reduce cheese consumption or choose low-fit cheese as an alternative. The low-fat cheeses include skim mozzarella, gouda, and cottage cheese that have less effect on the environment. Last but not least, use biodegradable and recyclable packaging. Cheese is certainly one of life's great pleasures. But there is no doubt that cheese of any type has significant impact on the environment compared with other food products. So by all means, enjoy your spread. But don't you think that it might be worth to scale back a bit on the size for the sake of the planet? That's all for this video. Do like, follow, and subscribe to our social media for more videos on life cycle assessment. Thanks for watching.